Whether you like his music or not, you can't dispute that Dizzy Rascal is a legend, not only of grime, but of UK music in general. As a teenager in the early 2000s, he was on the front line of the creation of the grime sound, alongside peers like Wiley and Roll Deep. In 2003, he dropped his seminal debut album, Boy in the Corner, a classic project that crowned Dizzy as one of grime's first ever mainstream stars and the youngest ever winner of the Mercury Prize Award at just 19 years old. From there on, he slowly started moving away from his pure grime roots in favour of chasing hits. And in the late noughties, early 2010s, Dizzy went on a run of number ones, with tracks like Dance With Me, Bonkers, Holiday, Dirty Disco and Shout, the sort of tracks that even your mom knew. Essentially, Dizzy achieved more mainstream fame than any rapper in the UK, laying out a blueprint that Stormzy soon followed. But Dizzy's rise to fame wasn't without its challenges and incidents that could have ruined his career forever. And one such incident happened right at the start of his career. And not only did it put his career in jeopardy, but it also put his life at risk too. And that's what we're going to dive into today, answering the question, who stabbed Dizzy Rascal. So hit subscribe if you haven't already, it takes two seconds, it makes me feel wicked, it makes you feel wicked. If you already have, then you're an absolute legend and you're nah that I love you. Reet, let's crack on with the video. For this one, we're turning the clock right back to 2002. I was seven years old and still 10 times harder than you. Tony Blair was Prime Minister, Ant and Deck looked like this, and some lads from East London were busy pioneering a sound that was about to change the face of UK music forever. The commercial birth of grime was upon us. The sound had already been building up steam on pirate radio stations across London like Rinse FM, Deja Vu, Delight and Major, with Wiley and his crew, Page Your Go and Roll Deep leading the charge. They were transitioning away from the softer, more dance floor friendly sound of Garage to create a sound that favoured the MC more. They curated grittier, bassier sounding beats, with a faster 140 BPM and more space for an MC to spotlight their lyricism. This new sound gave artists the opportunity to paint a vivid picture of what was really going on around them. It was aggressive and unrelentingly real. Early reports started describing the sound as grimy, and because of this, the name grime caught on for the sound and the genre. I just wanted to quickly take a second to shout out DJ Target's Grime Kids book. Uh, this basically inspired the whole video and informed a lot of the video as well. Uh, this isn't an ad for the book. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Target or anything. I mean, I'd love to, uh, but it's just kind of cool. So I recommend giving that a read as well after this video. Go and buy it on Amazon or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, back to the story. It was around 2002 when the industry was starting to notice the hype this new wave of grimy MCs were making. Two MCs well and truly making noise were Dizzy Rascal and Wiley. Dizzy was getting a lot of hype at that point because a test pressing of his first solo single, I Love You, was circulating and it was obviously going to be mega. Everyone just knew that this 17 year old had bags and bags of raw talent. At the time, Dizzy worked closely with Wiley in what was like a big brother, little brother relationship. Both MCs were trying to make a name for themselves out on the gritty streets of Bow, East London. During this period, the pair were recording in the studio of Nick Cage Denton, who happens to be the manager of legendary independent label XL Recordings. And when Nick heard what was going on down in the studio, he knew these two were on the precipice of something huge, and he wanted to sign them both to release their debut albums through XL. Dizzy and Wiley jumped at this opportunity. The plan was that Dizzy would release his debut album first, with Wiley's coming next. Wiley had a lot more on his plate musically than Dizzy. He was more involved with the Page You Go collective, as well as managing Roll Deep and producing for a lot of other artists, whereas Dizzy had one focus only, his debut album. He went deep into album mode as soon as he was signed. On the 26th of May 2003, Dizzy officially dropped I Love You, the debut single from his forthcoming debut album. And as predicted, it did bits. It instantly became a top 40 hit and had everyone buzzing for the debut album that was to follow. Just under a month later, on the 21st of July, the wait was finally over. Boy in the Corner dropped, and again it dived straight into the top 40 and it felt like the whole country was talking about it. The week after it was released, with Boy in the Corner still rising up the charts, both Roll Deep and Pay As You Go, including Dizzy, flew out to Ayanapa for their annual club residencies. It was on this trip that things would go terribly wrong for the teenage grime prodigy. He wasn't really bothered about going over previously, but this time Wiley convinced him to come and celebrate his album's success. 
The rest of both crews have been to the Cypriot town a good few times, so Dizzy followed their lead. As soon as they landed on the first night, they all rented out mopeds and headed out to the main party square. The place was packed out at one of the busiest times of the season. The two crews weren't performing that night, so they decided instead to head to a venue where So Solid crew had performed earlier in the evening. Later that night, the crew headed to an after party spot called Insomnia, and outside, Dizzy got into a scuffle with some So Solid crew members, or friends of theirs at the very least. In case you don't know, So Solid crew are one of the most influential and most successful UK garage crews of all time. And they had about 30 members, and a lot of them were actual certified madmen. According to reports at the time, it was said that the fight broke out because Dizzy allegedly touched So Solid crew member Lisa Mafia's arse. Definitely not the smartest move from young Dizzy, although I'm sure a lot of alcohol was involved. Either way, the fight outside of the club was brief and quickly separated by security, with Dizzy heading back to his hotel, counting his blessings. However, the following day, Wiley wasn't happy about the fight, and he wanted to go out and find these guys and exact some revenge of his own on behalf of Dizzy. When he eventually found a few of them on a beach, there are reports that Wiley pulled a knife, but he claims this never happened. He just wanted a fist fight. Either way, Dizzy wasn't interested in getting involved and decided to ride away from an enraged Wiley, heading away from the beach on a moped by himself. Having heard Wiley was on a rampage, more so solid crew affiliated guys hit the streets now looking for revenge of their own, specifically looking to get Wiley. Unfortunately, they didn't find Wiley. They found Dizzy riding on his own. They confronted him and went on to stab him at least six times. Excuse the belly, I mean. One there. One on my back there. You see it? Okay. One there, one under there, a few. Oh, so you got stabbed all over your body? Yeah. Dizzy was rushed to hospital, whilst word got out and tabloids in the UK ate up the story, quickly flying journalists over in search of front page news. Boy in the Corner was rising through the charts even faster, whilst Dizzy was getting stitched up in a Cypriot hospital bed. The Cypriot police quickly arrested a number of people they thought were involved, including the leader of So Solid Crew, Mega Man. However, he denied having any knowledge of the incident, and Dizzy was in no mood to help the police either during his recovery. Speaking to Vlad TV about the incident in 2016, Dizzy said, I had a situation with the police out there, which is why I don't like it, why I don't like the country. Where I was lying in the hospital and they wanted names. They arrested a couple of people who they thought it was, but it wasn't them, and they didn't like that I wouldn't cooperate. They weren't happy about that. So then they started reading off names. I feel like they knew who did it, but they're not getting answers. In the same interview, he also said, as far as knives getting involved, that wasn't because of me. Someone else pulled out a knife. Didn't use it. Then later on, that's when people came back with knives. But that wasn't me. I think with that quote, Dizzy was alluding to the fact that Wiley pulled the knife and further escalated the situation. After a couple of days in hospital, Dizzy was back showing his face in the Iron Apple clubs against doctor's orders. He wanted people to see him. He wanted to show that he hadn't been intimidated by the incident. However, his demeanor had changed and it was obvious that the incident had affected him mentally as well as physically, which no doubt it obviously would. A few days later, Nick from XL Recordings flew out and moved Dizzy into a separate hotel from the rest of the crew so that he could get some rest and prepare to fly home when he was fit to do so. Nick and Dizzy then flew back to London without Wiley and Co. Dizzy vowed never to return to Iron Napa after the stabbing, despite the fact the entire garage scene and now grime scene were using it as their home away from home for big clubs and big parties in 2004. Anyway, when everyone got back home, it was clear that things had changed at the record label. Nick's relationship with Dizzy was growing stronger and they were focusing a lot more time and resources on him. Their relationship with Wiley, on the other hand, only grew more fractured, with many blaming the Iron Apple incident for this fracturing. Long story short, Wiley eventually left XL Recordings in 2004 of his own accord. The way I see it, I think he maybe jumped before he was pushed. But either way, according to DJ Target's book, nor Dizzy or Nick have ever spoken to Wiley since all these events happened after Iron Napa. How are you and Dizzy Rascal now? Have you ended up things? Oh man, you? listen, I love that boy. He knows I love that boy. But we're not going to be friends. Not because we argue, because that arguing is just whatever we're going to argue. That's bullshit. But I mean, we're not going to be friends anymore because he holds me responsible for him being stabbed. And... I take responsibility. I didn't stab him. Yeah. I take responsibility because you was with me. Yeah. But 
after 14 years, I would have thought you would have realised I didn't stab you. You know why all of the drama happened because of your actions in the first place. I don't want to put you under the bus. I just want you to try and understand I didn't stab you. Yeah. And I'm not your enemy. So if we don't want to talk forever, that's fine. Yeah. So who did it? Who stabbed Dizzy Rascal? As you might imagine, no one 100% knows except for the people who were there and actually witnessed the scene. None of which have ever snitched, obviously. But it's pretty clear from all reports that the attackers were so solid affiliated in some way either friends, fans, or direct members of the crew. Some still point to Mega Man, and Wiley even spat some bars suggesting that Dizzy and Mega Man's beef was actually a lot bigger than it seemed. So Mega Man is still a lot of people's prime suspect, I guess. So it could have been him. He was arrested by the Cypriot police reportedly, but obviously there's no evidence to support that. The fact of the matter is, thankfully Dizzy survived the incident, and we weren't robbed of a UK grime legend in the making. And if you're going to take one thing away from this video, take away the fact that pulling a knife often only leads to escalate the incident rather than protect yourself. So leave the knives at home and if you need to kick someone all over for touching some lass's arse or touching your arse in fact, just do it with fists instead. Just batter them with good old fists. Good old one too. You learn something every day on this channel. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I appreciate it. Hit like if you enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe. Comment let me know what you think of the case and who you think did it. Also, let me know what you think of this stupid light setup. I was trying something new and it makes my skin look greasy as fuck. I look like I'm um, just a fucking big grease ball. But either way, uh, Patreon's there if you want to support us a little bit more. We give away UK rap signed merch and stuff on a regular basis. Hit us up there. Follow me on Instagram as well. Um, I'm posting a lot more things there. You see like behind the scenes shit when i do my photography shit all that stuff anyway more new videos coming soon until then check out these ones pick one pick one of them that one fuck my doom man just pick one